Welcome to Non-Human Entities YouTube channel. Please subscribe, like, and share if you enjoy this show. Let me go ahead and bring my guest on. He is Steve Olson, and I'm going to let him give you uh, some background on himself because I don't have a bio here in front of me. Um, uh, good evening, Steve Olson. Welcome to Late Night in the Midlands. Michael, it's such a pleasure to be with you. How are you tonight? I am great. I'm so glad that we finally got on the same page and we're able yes. to make this happen. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of drama around me lately, that's for sure. Hey, you and me both, my friend. Uh, so don't feel bad. <laughs> but well, it just seems like when you kind of dedicate your life to the truth movement, like, you know, now it's been an, a year that I've been doing nothing but, right? And I'll tell you what, it takes a toll, doesn't it, Michael? Well, yeah, it does. And that, you know, but that's what they want. They want you to get tired and fed up and give up. And I won't give up. And I'm sure you won't give up either. You know, it's. Oh, no, I love your show. It's like you, you almost, I know this is, I'm not trying to flatter you or anything like that. I'm just telling you, you kind of replaced Art Bell for me. Really? Wow. Yeah. Remember Art Bell? Oh, I remember Art Bell very well. <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to interview him, Michael? Um, uh, well, I've not interviewed him, but I've talked to him on the phone. Um, How cool. Yeah, I, I used to be on his network over there, uh, the Dark Matter Radio Network. Um, but, uh, but anyway, they, they actually wanted me to give up L&M and come over there and do a full-time uh, show on their network. Um, oh. Yeah, but it just... Not for me. I would have had to give up my network. I would have had to give up. Like they told me certain people couldn't be a guest on my show. And, and so I, I said, no, can't do that. But I appreciate them thinking of me. Right on. I mean, still, it's flattering in a sense. But so I think a good place to start is maybe even talk about Art Bell. Remember his um, interviews with Father Malachi? Oh, yes, I do. Those are great interviews, too. They're among the best of all time, right? And one of the things that if you'll remember that Father Malachi talked about was the third seal of Fatima. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he was very guarded, even what he said about it. Remember that, too? Well, yeah, he was. But I thought that it eventually came out that it did have something to do with, uh, I'll say it, Planet X. Right. Planet X or, or what a lot of people believe is a brown dwarf or dwarfs that have some planets with them and um i'm not i you know again i'm, I'm not going to try to be an apologist for planet x what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you what i know okay okay so okay so i start with father malachi that was the first time i ever heard of planetary catastrophe and and i was a catholic back in those days and you know how you your beliefs change when you start getting into the truth you start going oh my god this is well, yeah, you start you start learning, you know, the BS from the rest, and you know, you you start to try to divide that stuff. Which, you know, if you're if you're just getting into this stuff, it's not easy. There's a lot of information out there, and not all of it is legitimate. Correct, and a lot of people don't have great great intentions either, and so it's really hard to tell the big guys from the bad guys in this space as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm saving the, the photos you sent me, and I'll at some point here, I'll get them loaded up uh, so I can share them with people. Well, that first one I, I would like to talk about, and, and you, know, you can put it up and just show it, but it's, a, it's, the, it's the kind of sense of urgency that seems to have been placed around the subject. Have you noticed the explosion of Nibiru researchers that have put up YouTube channels or radio stations or whatever media? Have, is, is that just me or has there been an explosion? No, there is an explosion of it. You know how I know? I know because yeah. I have guys who go out there uh, and, and locate my show from, you know, you get the thieves who take it and monetize it and all that. And they go look, and I'll tell you what, most of what they take has to do with Nibiru. And they'll have, they'll have 40, 50 channels of Nibiru. And believe me, no shortage of people coming to watch it. Right. I have a big problem with that myself. But so my story is I just started looking at, it. I, you know, I, I actually blew it off. I was like, I paid attention to it back in 2014 for like a couple of months. And then I was like, nah, this isn't real. The trolls got to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, I was watching like solo evolution or some channel and it forced me to take a look at some ISS pictures, 
which we're going to talk about here, this most recent one from today. Um, I'm but, gonna, the, but the whole I, the I, whole idea was the time was getting close. There was a lot of people that have been following it. And then I did all this research on Harrington and Stitchin and Marshall Masters. And, you know, I mean, I can I can I, I can I can just chapter and verse these people. Nancy Leader, Zeta Talk. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I just soaked myself, immersed myself in it, and started doing my own experiments. I actually started flying some high altitude balloons to see if I could capture anything, things like that. Sure. You know what I'm saying, Michael. Yeah. And, and, and so then, then I started to put up YouTube videos. That my views went from 300 to a thousand to ten thousand to twenty. You know, I mean, just started going nuts. And all I was doing was showing pictures that I'd find or that people would share with me, like this one here that I'm showing you now. Okay, I've got one up on the screen right now on the YouTube, and it's the first one you sent me. Oh yeah, the first one, right? Um, that's the one with the um, that's the one with the uh, the the orb with the debris, little apparent debris trail behind it, but it's really hard to see. So like the blue, uh, let's see which one's uh, I gotta see. It's hard. To, where I gotta get to the? Would you like here? I can. There we go. I got it now. Oh, okay, okay, now I see which one I sent you first. I just had to go back and see which one I sent you first. So the first one was bas basically taken from a just a basic picture that was taken up in the sky, and then but this person kind of knows where to look now because we all corro collaborate, corroborate. It's a huge network, a big community of people. It's not just me. I mean, I worked with probably twenty really hardcore researchers. And I work with probably 100 casual researchers that are really good material, you know, bring good material. This one actually did his own work. And then if you go to that kind of, uh, if you look at it, you can see this like orb in the lower left-hand corner with the, you know, again, like an apparent deb debris trail. Okay. And I'm just bringing in the other pictures here too. Let's see. Let me get that out of the way. All right. There we go. So, yeah, I do see... See, so when I initially looked at this, I thought that now down on the bottom left-hand corner there, it, it looked like the sun. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, I see all this debris around it. Is that what you're talking right, it's about? It's not the sun. And it, that blue one, the, the blue one, that's the actual picture. That's the actual, like, if you looked up in the sky, that's what you'd see. And, you know, the, the kinds of things that I will say will sound preposterous on their face. I know it. I, it's like, go get him a lead hat. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm down. I get it. But when you, you know how it is. When you immerse yourself down one of these rabbit holes, let's take Area 51 or something that everybody kind of knows about. If you walked up to somebody that really knows their stuff about Area 51 and they said something about Phil Snyder and, you know, uh, Dul Dulce, blah, 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 they'd think you were crazy. The average person on the street, if you told them about just Dolce, they'd be like, oh, you're crazy. Uh, maybe we should go talk to the mental institution. But you and I both know that if you do a lot of research into Phil Schneider and all those people, they're legit. Yeah, well, yeah, I, you know, and, and, and that's just it. So I guess when I'm trying to wake somebody up, I try to stick with basic stuff first because, I mean, you could shock the hell out of somebody if you start getting into Snyder. <laughs> I know, right? Right? But so... So that's the kind of thing, if you look at the yellow, the one that's kind of got the yellow tint to it, this is the object that we've been photographing from all over the place. And this is the one I got really excited about today because this is not a, a perfect orb. One of the bodies in this system is not an orb. It's more of an oval-shaped object with pits in it. And we have dozens and dozens of pictures of this thing, man. I mean, and they're and we we theorize that they're covering it up with a low level light laser system and lights, and I I know this is going to sound preposterous again, I, but I've done my research. I have patents. I have uh, testimony. I have the Germans just built their lighting system, getting ready to put it up to replace this one, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, Michael, if you imagine me on a campground, right? You and I are camping, and you and I are going get going out to get wood, and I have a, my flashlight and I shine it right in your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see anything behind me in that dusk or night light when you're when we're camping? No, absolutely not. Except well, maybe we had, maybe pollen or something you might see. <laughs> I don't right. know. The the most in, the the breakthrough that we had at WSO is we had an insider that overheard. I know this is the here it's hearsay, okay? But it linked together a lot of the scientific work that we did and a lot of the things that we were noticing. And, and that insider dropped info that was talking about a low-level light lighting system, uh, laser lighting system that can both 
project holograms on the atmosphere and also just act like that flashlight that blocks objects out of the sky and it can be positioned all over the place and blah, blah, blah. Wow, Steve, that is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. It is. It's nuts. But again, listen, if you go back and look, you could find on WSO or on GNN or any of my uh, channels, you can go back and look at the research we did. You know, critique my research. But right now, I'm just telling you, the, we're teaching people how to look for where, where these bodies are. And they're a lot closer than people think. Now, I've got the yellow, the yellowish photo up uh, that you were talking about. Now, I see I see the object up in the top right corner. Again, looks like the sun, but you're saying that's not the sun. That's, no, that that's was, next uh, that was like if you were just looking at the photograph, it looked like a blue, like the blue sky, but with just a little bit of image tinting. Because remember, these cameras have a much more sensitive, um, let's call it shutter speed, than the human eye. So they pick up these ever faint bands on the IR and UV side of sight and also have a much faster shutter speed and get, gather more information. And that's why they that's why a camera can see it, but an eye human eye cannot. Now, how would how would one know for sure that they're not like I guess orbs or or, or you know from the the camera uh, lens flare? Uh, sure. Let's, you, let's look. Absolutely. And so we, we, we definitely sort through and, try, and we see lots of lens flares, Michael. And I guess all I can say about that is if you want, you know, if you want to think it's a lens flare, that's that's fine with me, because here's here's where I'm coming from with this whole mission that I'm on right now. And that is if you think through our work that you see a clear and present danger, I'm kind of borrowing from Marshall Masters, who I have a lot of respect for, because, man, we talk about a guy that's been vilified. Right. Well, him and I, we don't get, I, I found a flaw in his work. And when I, and now listen, I'm someone who's had Marshall Masters on many times, always been very uh, friendly to him. And one day I did, somebody came to me and showed me something and said, you know, showed me an object that was actually in front of clouds. So all I wanted to do is ask him about it. And he emailed me back and told me to F off. Oh. He gets really, he gets so, he gets so ornery. Yeah, and I also had a falling out with him too. He thinks that uh, my partner Wayne Steiger on GNN is a government agent and my <laughs> handler. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Well, and, and he, he would be closer to that because he did come from CNN. But anyway, maybe so. Yeah. But one of the, let, that's take that's diverting us into a really good subject. I'd like to talk about on this in this sure. whole field. Okay, and that is the Messiah complex. Yeah, okay. I have never seen the Messiah complex more ever than than the than people that create and talk about Planet X in my life. And it seems like the longer they've been in the genre, longer in tooth they are in this genre, the more Messiah they get. And I'm not going to name any specific names, and I'm not necessarily addressing it to Marshall or anybody else. I'm just saying, what is it about this subject that makes people so, I don't know, Messiah complex? Like, I have to save the world. I don't know. I, I think it's the internet that's done that. People just, I don't know, they've, you know, you think of the past and, and not one average person couldn't get, you know, so many people to listen to something they have to say as you can today. And so I think some, some people it goes to their head and I don't know, I, at least that's what I think. And, and well, I, I'll tell you what, man, I got an ass whooping in uh, December. They took my YouTube channel down with three fraudulent strikes that we won and got the channel back up again, but we lost the whole month of December. Yeah, oh, I've had those battles myself. I have. I've had people make false strikes and so on. And then, you know, you're burdened with proving everything when these people don't have to prove a damn thing. All they got to do, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then that was right when we were trying to launch our WSOLive.com, which is, a, well, we, I decided to go premium site, Michael. I mean, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the trolls. I'm sick of not having control over content, you know, all that. So we, I don't mean to talk about that. I'm not trying oh, to. Oh, no, that's I, quite all right. I kind of like this conversation for a minute because I have a lot of problems with the thieves, the pirates. And so, so what? Now you say you go pro with YouTube. Is that, is that it? That, that's what you mean like a pro account yeah so okay so uh, i don't know this is a good good segue too to talk about overall and that sure. is on on youtube you know it got to the point where i was be i was such a clearinghouse of information that i didn't have time to do anything else 
And I think that you'll hear like others um, in our in our genre will say the same thing. It just gets to the point where it's like I'm seeing so much information and so many people are absorbing the information because, you know, it's a very high interest subject. Yeah. You know, I'm up to almost 56,000 subscribers now on WSO and about 13,000 on GNN. And we've got about 3,000 paid people on uh, WSOlive.com. And the, so the interest is super, super high. But I'll tell you what, the price you pay is super, super high, too, because there's a lot of moles and trolls and guys that kind of sneak their way in. But this thing that YouTube did, so all these people were starting to make a living off YouTube. So you make a couple thousand dollars a month, like maybe $3,000 a month, if you're getting the kind of views I was getting. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the advertisers went away. Have you heard about that, Michael? I did hear about something about some of, a lot of the advertisers uh, dropping off. They did. And so there are people now that are just scrambling, you know, and anyway, the point is, is I think that they're really going to take, they're taking big swings at the uh, truther movement. And, you know, and, and I got guys, you guys got to support uh, Michael's work guys, because, and I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to patronize you. I'm saying it's true. We are not going to be able to get the big advertisers to give us money to do this work. I mean, so support, you know, L and M just do it, man. I'm sorry, Michael. No, that's quite all right. I mean, so so getting this pro account, what does that do? Is that to help you be more secure, or what does it do? Um, I don't know what, exactly what you're referring to, but um, I'm in a, like I have you. I have the YouTube WSO branded account, and I have um, you know, and then I have GNN, which is just a regular YouTube oh, channel. Oh no, I thought you said that you went. You had to go and get a pro account because of the. Uh, the trolls or something like that. I was like, oh no! I, what I was trying to say, maybe I missed, maybe something I said that, but I was what I said is we got our channel back after a battle. Yeah, and they had to put the channel back up and restore the channel, but it was after the peak season of advertising, and the, you know when we were hoping to grow the channel and move into the you know whatever. To do this as an enterprise is extremely difficult just to cover your overhead, as you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, uh, you know, people think that, you know, you just turn on a mic and go. And, yeah, maybe over on Blog Talk Radio they do that. But, you know, for what I'm doing, I mean, this this takes all, all my day. I mean, I'm, I'm on this. I get in this studio about 2 o'clock, and I don't leave here until almost 2 o'clock in the morning, sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning before I'm done working. So I put a lot into it. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard to pull away from it because the, you know, the information is so interesting. But like in this picture with the yellow though, you know, and you see this or we, we know, we've seen this before. We know how to see it. And it's like, you know, then the astronomers will say, well, we can't see it. I said, because you're trying to look at it out in the Kuiper belt. It's right next to, it's like in our solar, inner solar system, the, these bodies, these objects, you know? Okay. And, and so that's what I'm claiming anyway. And that's my, that's my theory. And I'm not trying to say that I, I have all the answers, but I'm just saying if there's a clear and imminent threat here, I'd rather know about it and have somebody tell me about it than, you know what I mean? Than be ignorant. Now here's what I see on the blue picture. I not only see an object, the more I look at it, I see an object down at the bottom left, but I also see something looks circular up near the top too, in the right hand corner. Yeah. Right, and you'll what you'll notice is that, and this is one of the odd things that we're seeing in the sky that kind of underscores what we're talking about, and that is that parts of the sky are darker. And I mean, where does dark come from, man? How do you get dark? <laughs> yeah, I, I do notice that. that. Yeah. yeah. Right? Or like, you have you seen some of these recent sun pictures where big areas of dark energy are coming out of the sun? It's like, wait a second. I thought like the coronal mass ejections were supposed to be like white. Well, yeah, and, and as far as uh, South Carolina goes, they come trailing the hell out of us. So this morning I had a doctor's appointment, so I was up early. And, man, I get out there, and I, the sky is just unbelievable. No wonder everybody getting sick. I mean, it's just it's amazing what they're spraying up there. And, well, okay, let's, cor let's corroborate some things together. And this is, one of the, this is the kind of thing that I talk about and think about a lot, right? And that is, um, so... You've got these heavy chemtrails. We know that they're, they, they have aluminum, barium, lithium. We know that they're used for radiation management. And we and the answer that we're getting from Dane Whittington and his group, it, who I think is the foremost expert on chemical um, aerial spraying. And if you guys don't know who Dane Whittington is, you know, again, I recommend and I'll, I would be glad to pass you his information to get him on the show. Awesome guy. I've but spoke with him several times. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. 
And we had him on our show and we were talking about this stuff and he's convinced that it's because of the, you know, of the, of the kind of standard Bernie Sanders, Al Gore, you know, the earth is warming up because of carbon pollution and that kind of storyline. He's not off of that. Right. Right. So that's fine. You know, that's one thing to look at. Why are they doing this desperate effort that clearly Wayne, Dane Winnington proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt is a desperate act. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And you know what else is, is kind of uh, hit me funny a little bit is in the past, Dang would not go to the Planet X. I mean, if I brought that up, he'd say, well, I want to, you know, keep things, you know, away from the conspiracy, right? So he would, right. and now I seen an article, uh, oh, I don't know, it might have been a month or two ago, where he actually wrote about them using the chemtrails to block uh, the sky from seeing, you know, astronomers from seeing out there. And I thought, yeah. oh, maybe he's coming around now on this. Well, again, it's like, okay, so, okay, so I take your information, and I actually can challenge them on this. I said, Dane, it just doesn't sound right to me that they would do geoengineering unless it was like they had to. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I say that too. They got to breathe this stuff too. And, you know, then you yeah. hear, well, they're reptilians. So they can say, okay, oh. all right. <laughs> I take so much crap for saying this, Michael. I'm just going to say it. I don't believe that the people that are flying these missions believe for one second they're not doing it because they don't have to do it. Well, that's right, and I believe I believe the ones that are flying it. I don't know if the, how much information they're given, you know, and whatever they're told, you know, they're gonna have to do it anyways. I mean, you can't you can't say no to orders. You know what happened, right? I do because I was in the military and I and you follow orders. But again, I, if the, you know, the, the if there was a global effort doing this chemtrailing, which I think Dane has pr plenty of evidence for, he's the expert on it. But it's like, why would they be doing this? So I talk, I'm talking to this other insider. You know how you get your sources, right? Yeah. Told me that one of the big reasons that they're doing the chemtrailing is because they're trying to create an electrical barrier between us and the other objects in that system, including these brown star or these brown dwarf stars. And the idea is to keep the Earth from connecting from to it magnetically. You get what I'm saying, Michael? Yeah. So they mm -hmm. try to create a magnetic barrier, like almost trying to try to make it like a Faraday cage around the Earth, if you will. Right. So, but I thought that was pretty plausible, don't you? Well, yeah. Hey, listen, I think all theories. I mean, I'll listen to them all. I think that there's multiple reasons for the chemtrailing. I don't think it's just one. I I have a friend. Uh, he's no longer with us these days, but uh, he uh, he always felt the chemtrails were to hide Planet X. And, you know, I says, it's it's not just that. I think there's other ways they could go about hiding it if that's all they want to do. I, at least I thought, but maybe not. I think there's far more to it. I think they're doing some radiation management. I think they're doing some, I think they're doing some drugging like the lithium. Why? Come on. What's up with lithium, dude? I mean, you know? Well, yeah. We did our own chemical tests and all that stuff on the rainwater and all that. We And we did two independent tests about a year ago. And we got the same result everybody else gets. Aluminum, barium, lithium. That's right. And I had a, a gentleman from that uh, documentary, What in the World Are They Spraying? And uh, he had sent me the lab results that he had got, uh, the, yeah. you know, that he had took. And the aluminum content was way over the acceptable limit. I mean, the, the soil is saturated with it. So a bunch of my subscribers started asking for aluminum tests. They're like, hey, man, will you just test my blood aluminum level? And we were getting the tests were coming back, and they're all saying, for sure, man. Our doctor said, how did you know, you know? <laughs> and and then all of a sudden, we started getting the feedback. They're not going to let us do the aluminum blood test anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy. So the doctors were shocked about it, too, and all of a sudden, it was covered up. That's what I'm saying. Excuse yeah. Me for coughing. But. Yeah. Oh, that's so anyway, right. could you go to that picture with the big donut looking thing? And the I'm, I'm there now. It's the, I'll call it the rainbow donut. The rainbow donut, right? So <laughs> this is disturbing to uh, to us researchers. This is from today. This is one of my best researchers, Cricket. I'll just shout out to her. And Cricket is a you know she actually saw it with her naked eye one day, and that was when she kind of she cracked, and she called me up, and I had you know I actually had to counsel her for a couple minutes, you know, to get her to, you know <laughs> off the cliff. But anyway, so she's become a devoted researcher, and she got this from the ISS today before they cut the feed. And this is this this notorious orb with a hole in it 
Now I believe that it's a it could be a refraction, but this is the most this is the most incredible direct on picture of something from the ISS over our atmosphere I've ever seen. There's no explanation for that. That is not the moon. No, no, that absolutely isn't the moon. Now what's the, the bright thing up way up at the top there? We do not know. Okay, so that's not a sun or anything like that. I would assume no, it'd be a lot. The sun is bright. not even close. This is like just going into the dark side of the earth. Huh. Wonder what yeah. that is. I know, right? Yeah. And so we look at this, we look at this kind of evidence, right? The next thing you look at is, and I know every, almost everybody that's listening knows this stuff, right? You go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory near Earth Object, it's JPL NEL program, and you go there and you look at that list and you will see that almost 90% of the recent of the discovered asteroids that are near Earth objects that are a threat to us have been discovered in 2017, my friend. And, you know, they're getting closer and closer. Every time an asteroid comes by, they're saying it's going to be the closest pass by yet. And, you know, how, how many times can it be the closest before it hits? Well, again, I think we're in a I think we're in kind of a shooting gallery. I still don't think people appreciate how big space is. It's like when you say there's an asteroid cluster or, you know, a grouping or something like that. You have to remember, space is huge. These things can miss us easy, right? We did, we haven't been hit by a big one really since that Russian thing in 2014, but I don't consider that a direct strike. It was horrible. It was tragic. Don't get me wrong. Right. But it wasn't like a asteroid hit the Earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but when you get one that's coming in between the Earth and the Moon, I mean, there's. I would think there's always that chance that it gets sucked in. You know. Well, and then it suggests we've had this long uh, history of peace. I mean, I don't remember a huge asteroid event in major history. You know, maybe the Noah's flood would be the last time we saw one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, that could so, be. Yeah, I don't know. But what I'm trying to say, I think Graham Hancock has done the best research on any of this stuff of anybody. But he shows a 12,000-year destruction uh, cycle. Um, Sitchin thought it was a 3,600 year destruction cycle, but all he had was the Sumerian text. And I had Heiser on, Michael Heiser, who I consider a better Sumerian, uh, Sumerian, uh, scholar than Sitchin will ever be. And Michael debunked a lot of what Sitchin said. Yeah. Well, I, I've talked to a lot of people who don't totally agree with, uh, with his work. Uh, he took liberties in, in his translations. Let's just put it that way. Michael convinced me by, and he had to actually rub my nose in it because I took issue <laughs> with Mike Heiser. Yeah, I've, I've had him on before uh, as well. You know, I've had just about everybody except for Graham Hancock. Uh, he just, he seems to be the tough one. Him and, uh, oh, there's another guy out there. I can't. Oh, I, oh, the guy that travels with him, Gordon something, Randall, Gordon Randall. That's another guy you got to talk to because they they show Gordon is like a very fast. He was on Joe Rogan's program just recently. So if anybody knows about Joe Rogan, go check out Gordon Randall and maybe you could get him on your show too, Michael, because he is a fascinating guest. Anyway, this guy and Graham Hancock just got done with a bunch of traveling where they actually went around and did this scientific research to show this cataclysmic event of 12,000 years ago and how it changed the earth and that it was like a very sudden change. And they are they are putting out the best data on that, as far as I'm concerned. Well, we know it was a sudden change. It was fast, and that whatever was living here on this planet didn't have much of a chance. Uh, I mean, because it can't quick. I mean, when you find a like, willy mammoth with, uh, you know, food still in their mouth that's fresh enough to still eat, I mean, you know, that that's a quick freeze. A uh, really right. And Okay, so here's another piece, little piece of data. I'll just say it. And 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 uh, I have an astronomer friend. I have many astronomer friends, amateur astronomers, probably about fifty that contribute to me, and tell me what's going on. And a lot of them tell me I'm full of crap all the time, too. By the way, many of my astronomers are just like, "Hey, shut up." But one of them sent me a picture today that I put up on my channel, where he actually showed that Jupiter was off of its its axis by like. 90 degrees almost like it was almost completely hor or vertical when it's supposed to be horizontal through the telescope you know, and that, you've been watching that could been watching jupiter for four or five six years that could explain what happened to the big storm there for a while remember it disappeared yeah yeah they couldn't figure out why it was gone and and i think didn't even the rings of saturn disappear at one point 
Yeah. So, yeah. So what the hell is causing all that? <laughs> angle, angle of view, angle of view. You you know you can't see the rings of Saturn if you look straight at it. Well, I've looked at it through a telescope before, and it's it looks awesome. I mean, you can it see does, right? Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm down. It's really... all right, so there's that piece of data, right? The the near Earth orbit, the near Earth objects. Then we've got the chem trailing we talked about, which is still not fitting in yet. We just we're just putting facts on the table, right? Right. Then we've got this 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 slow release of information from uh, the authorities about Planet Nine. Mm -hmm. they're yeah. asking us to help find planet nine and it's like a big game now well yeah and you know when planet nine came, when they came out with that i thought uh-huh demote pluto call this next one planet nine when it really should have maybe have been the 10th planet i don't know uh it's like they play games with the wording and uh you know planet nine yeah that's, that's, uh, that would make sense that you know that's what they're looking for would be this planet x maybe just corroborate with me. All of a sudden, there's this big, like, well, they want us to look at wise IR photos on that look-see program, whatever the heck it is, and they want us to help them find anomalies in the IR band, and they want us to find Planet X a amateur astronomers, and they've already got four candidates for Planet X already. Did you hear about that? No, I did not hear yeah. about that at all. Do tell. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's happening. They they just found four. There was a big uh, hubbub on the um, on the internet. Just go look up, like just Google Planet Nine found four 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 found or four possible ca candidates. But the point being is there's that kind of thing going on. There's like this slow roll and like then I think it was like Christmas time and I saw on the newsstand one day and it just blew my mind. It was all about brown dwarfs. It was like a whole issue on brown dwarfs stars like. Really? Newsweek or whatever it was, Time or whatever it was, had a full issue on Brown Door. What the hell? And then you've got, like, so you've got that information kind of bleeding out, right? And NASA now says there's a Planet Nine. They say there's a Planet Nine. Mike Brown says there's a Planet Nine. Well, I think there's evidence that there is. I mean, there's something's perturbing, uh, you know, Neptune and uh, uh, Jupiter, or not Jupiter, but uh, Pluto and all that stuff. I mean, so they know there's a disturbance out there, right? Right. But here's the problem with that, that kind of looking at it from the Harrington point of view from 1991 or 1983, right, or whatever, right? Yeah. The problem is that it's, a lot of time has gone by and it's a lot closer. I, we believe at WSO and our researchers, we're finding that we think it's, it's closer than what people think. And they've been hiding it. That's our position. And I think they've been doing a relatively good job of trying to protect us from some of its effects. That's my take on it. And but it's just going to get to the point I think at some point where it's going to be too, you know, dramatic for our systems and our grids and all that kind of stuff to hold up, and we're going to have a period of where it's going to be rough. And, and but go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and 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 I see both sides. I mean, as much as people get so mad and say, "Well, if something like that's out there, then we deserve to know." And you know what, people? I guess if you put, if I was in their shoes, whoever they are, um, I nope. guess I would reconsider too. Because imagine millions of people. If you tell them, "Hey, here's how long you have," can you imagine what chaos would break out? Well, again, that's what Father Malachi, way back in the early '90s and late '80s, was was talking about with our bell. He said they can't talk about the third freaking prophecy of Fatima. It's about Planet X. And why, why worry people with it? You know, and I can take that point of view. And then you say, well, you're a hypocrite because you started a channel on it. Well, you know what? There's sometimes a pull at your heart where you got to do something. You just got to do it. And this is one of those things for me. But if I was sitting in government and I was the authorities, I'm not, I'm not sure I wouldn't take a different decision than, they have, than they've taken, Michael. Oh, absolutely. Now, sure, you and I want to know. I mean, and we feel like we have a right to know. But you and I might not be thinking about maybe how many hundreds of neighbors do we have around us that would get out their kitchen knives and start killing people to get supplies. I mean, and that's what you want to avoid. I mean, my God, it, it would it be. I mean, let's face it. This planet, uh, this planet's got a lot of people that don't have bright bulbs, and it would get ugly <laughs> quick. I mean, it really would. Do you want to do yeah? You want to do some prepping, man? Go watch The Walking Dead season one through season seven, man. You'll be ready for it. <laughs> well, you can get your practice right outside of the pharmacies these days. 
Yeah. Oh my, really? <laughs> and you know, then we're seeing all of okay. So now let's 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 just keep let's just keep going through the evidence, right? Then we're seeing these bizarre red clouds showing up in the southern hemisphere, and I sent you one. From I have Melbourne. I have it up right now. Yeah, yeah. And if you lighten that picture up, you don't have to. Just I mean, just show it the way it is. The 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 this is actual picture at dusk, and you can actually see a round orb and this red cloud, and we're seeing this these red what we're what we're uh, um, assuming is iron oxide cloud. Mm -hmm. That's why it's red. Okay. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and I've had people write me in about the, the color of the cloud saying that uh, it's uh, poison, uh, you know, that it's being sprayed. Some say it's it's coming from Planet X. And I say, I don't know. It's it's there. I, I'm, just putting, <laughs> I'm just saying it's another data point. OK, right. I'm not I'm just let's just this is what I do. I this is what WSO has done from the beginning. The only reason I started the channel is one day I just tipped over the edge. I looked at the South Pole telescope <laughs> that changed my life. It, they, it was before they started doing a lot of blocking down there. And I got a clear view of something down off the southern camera from the Davis station, the Australian camera down there. And I like I, I just, uh, you know, and by the way, that was also the day that basically tore my life to pieces because <laughs> at that time I was working as a cybersecurity consultant. I see. All right. And uh, so I think that was all on the pictures right now. Right. Or did you send me another one? I just sent you another one that when it got darker, the red cloud became even more visible to the camera. I mean, which is even weirder. OK, let me pop it up here for a minute. Uh, I think that's the one I actually got up right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. So, so now, uh, you know, people, I was talking about this the other night. People talk about, you know, and I get these emails all the time. Where's the best place to go and for safety and all this, this kind of thing. And, you know, I've gotten to the point where I say this, you know, that's how I sleep at night. I say, you know, if it's, if it's coming, then it's coming and there's nothing we could do about it and just live your life and, and, you know, be ready as ready as you can be. But, you know, I think something like that happens. I go back, people are going to say I'm a broken record now, but these nuclear power plants, I mean, how the heck do you get by those? Cause well, they're, they're, see, I think a lot of people don't understand that they will shut, they, they do have shutdown procedures and stuff like that. I think that Fukushima was, well, I guess, I, you know, I'm going to say something pretty radical here. Are you ready for this? Sure. Uh, Fukushima, I believe, was a bombing. A bombing? Yeah. Nuclear? Bomb. Like, yeah. And we did, uh, Wayne Steiger and I did a, um, a, a, a in-depth research of Fukushima and what happened to those buildings. And we got a white paper from a nuclear engineer and all his colleagues, like they had this group. They sent us the white paper and it basically proved that the Fukushima was actually bombed, not only bombed, but hit with a nuclear weapon. Hmm, now, I've heard that from others, too. Uh, about it being uh, nuked and causing the earthquakes even that way. Correct. And now I don't know about the earthquake part of it, but I, the the point is, is that the that 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 it, it seemed intentional. And when you start, that was like they call it Japan's nine uh, eleven. I mean, they really have pulled that thing apart. That is, not, that and now they can't even get a robot to stay alive for more than six hours, and they can't do anything about it, man. It's totally out of control. Oh, it is. It's absolutely out of control, and you know, it's it's just going to keep going. I I don't see them. They they've got no way to stop it. I mean, if I don't think they do, and if they do, they're not breaking out with it. The picture I just sent you, Michael, is the best picture I have seen ever from the ground. Okay, in uh... my life. I'm searching for it on my on your Skype. On my no. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, is this is the well? You sent me two here. I think there's a there's this. Yeah, one. take the one. Take the one with the bright sun, and the the that one with the, the chemtrails on it. Don't take the one that's like the the edited one. Oh, okay, okay. So that's what I got up right now. Bright sun. All right, so that do you see that it's a camera from our FAA network for pilots, so they can see visual. They're like visual pilots. They give them cameras up in Alaska. Oh yeah. This yeah. is 
Yep. Can you see the date on there and everything? I do. It's uh, Saturday, April 8th, 2017. Yep. Check out what, tell me which one of these things is the sun. Is it the orb that's on the horizon or is it the orb that's up in the sky? Can somebody please tell me which one is the sun? <laughs> that's not a lens flare, my brother. Okay. Yeah, it's cut off at the horizon. If it was a lens flare, we'd see the bottom of it. Yeah, I got it. Simple. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's visual. That's like a visual thing that you got to just look at and say, "What is going on? Do I know exactly what's going on?" That could be the artificial sun and the real sun. That could be a planet. That could be another star. I don't know. They don't tell us enough information for anybody, I think, to reliably date it. And that's the other point I want to make. Dating this event is ridiculous. Unless you're in the U.S. government. Well, you know, all I could say this. I'm looking at the, the photo, and and definitely there's something there. I mean, I, I'd like to, you know, after the show, I'm going to, I'll blow these up and really look at them. But, I mean, at the, usually here's the thing. When there's a, a lens flare, you'll usually see the light beams going down to it. I mean, there, there's a way, you, you know, you know what a lens flare looks like. And this doesn't have that, so... No, I can't explain this is what I'm saying. So what I'm looking for when I see a photo is, is if I can't explain it as, oh, I can see that's a concave lens. That could be a refraction from the side. I don't like, I throw away probably for every picture I really look at like this one where I'll actually like take it and study it. Probably see about 50 that are just, you know, whole oh, thank you for sending them. But people are learning how to look at stuff too, right? Yeah, and uh, one of the listeners says, I think these lens flares are reflections off oil-based chemtrails. What do you think of that? I think there's some reality and validity to it. And let's take this shift this conversation in a different direction because I'm suspicious, okay? Mm, okay. So we know we had Noah's flood. It's common knowledge that the Earth has gone through these cataclysmic changes. Maybe we're due, okay? I get it. I, all right, whatever, Okay. Maybe, though, it's just going to be a bumpy ride. And my fear is that it's going to be taken advantage of by the powers that be. You know, where they're going to use, you know, holograms, projections on this aluminum, you know, um, basically screen that they put around our planet. And I, I think there's – not, I'm not saying I have any direct evidence. It's just me speculating. But I have a feeling that the PTB is going to try to use this event and try to make it feel worse feel like a greater crisis yes people are going to get hurt but it's you know it's going to be used as a look you know you have to totally rely on us right now as the government to get you through this and i'm afraid of that that's well, what i'm most afraid of well yeah because anytime uh the government says they're here to help i mean we've heard that before right i mean that's never a good thing so uh... well if and when they disclose this thing right um, you know, if I'm right and they disclose it, I mean, what do you think, what do you think their instructions are going to be, Michael? I mean, just try to put yourself in like that mode one day, president, whatever, sitting on the throne, sits, gets up and says, guys, we have to tell you about this. We're going to get smucked by an asteroid. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, deep impact 2017, 2018, whatever it's going to be. Right. Cause I don't date it. You know how I think it would go, Steve, I think it would go something like this. I think what they would do is first put out a story and say, Hey, guess what? There are two uh, suns in deep space that are going to collide. And, and, but don't worry, you're going to see this new bright star in the sky. And it's just going to, but it's going to be from that explosion. It's just going to be the light traveling. So don't get alarmed. You're going to see it for probably two to three years in your sky. And don't worry. Meanwhile, while we're thinking we're looking at just a light reflection in the sky, <laughs> something's coming and you know, and we won't know until it actually starts causing serious problems. At that point, they've had enough time to lock themselves in. And when it's all over with, they'll come out. And for those who, are, who have survived it, well, you'll be property of whatever governments are still around, I, I think. That's my deepest fear. That's why I want people to be like aware, not just that things could happen that they're that they're covering up and we can't see and all that kind of. So that's interesting in itself. But you know, prepare yourself mentally for what's going to happen and don't be a don't be a uh, what do we call it? Um, uh, don't be a stooge. Yeah, I, and and you've probably what I was referring to is you've probably heard of the story that uh, NASA had put out about these two suns that are supposed to collide. 
uh when is it 2023 or something like that and they said yeah and then and they talked they talked about it being kind of like a supernova and everybody's gonna be able to see it yeah you're gonna see it's gonna they say it's gonna be the new brightest star in the sky and you'll see it for probably a couple years up there before it disappears well again so i'm gonna go to my next my next piece of evidence as i just kind of weigh this with you and just put facts on the table and this is going to be this is going to be the funny one because i can't stand being totally serious about this because it will kill you (laughs) well good i don't like being totally serious either but david bowie is a piece of evidence i'm I'm putting that on the table man david bowie yeah remember his last album dark star Uh, i do i've actually played the song on this show a few times isn't that creepy it is. It, well, it, and it could stand a reason. I mean, maybe he paid more attention to shows like this than, you know, than we give these these guys credit for. Oh, yeah. I think people listen to this stuff. You know, um, a lot of closet people out there. High, high closet people listening to us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, my uh, my my son's stepfather has a. A uh, picture that he had took from uh, what he said is Planet X. I mean, he totally surprised me. We we never have these conversations, you know. Uh, but uh, we we're at a birthday party, and he just walks up with his phone, and he goes, "Look at this." He says, is "That Planet X or what?" And it, I mean, it was a legitimate picture. There was a solid object, not far from the sun, along the side of the sun. Uh, out a little bit, but it was there, and um, I'm trying to get him to send me the pic, so because it's probably one of the most convincing ones I've seen yet. So I'm like, send me this picture. I want to share it with the experts. Well, I'll look at it, you know. But here, here's one that this is the kind of thing I look for when I look at these cams too. Look at how it's lit, just exactly that red orb, just exactly the way it should be lit as the sun is going by it. All right. Hold on a second. Right. I wonder if I can... Hold on, let me try something here. I want to see if I can get this so I don't have to download every picture. Maybe I could just find a way to show it on the screen. No, it's not going to let me. Okay, I'll download oh, it. I'm that's, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, no, catch no. you. Know. No, that's okay. I love showing photos to the listeners because, you know, they like that. So, well, again, you know, we're, we're, we're just crabbing evidence tonight. Remember, my last thing that I put on the table is David Bowie, and you still haven't told me that that's not legit. Well, no. Uh, you know, he, he, I think he believed that something was coming. Yes, he did. I mean, <laughs> look at the video. Just go look at Lazarus. Oh, my God. And uh, so, all right. So then the next thing we put on the table is just you know, the mountain of photographic evidence. I'll just say that we've got mountains of it now. And, you know, and depending on the time of day and the lighting conditions and stuff like that, we get to see things here and there, wisps, you know, and stuff like that. But no way have I met anybody that I think that can legitimately claim they know what's going to happen, Michael. I really don't. No, and and I don't either. And that's why when people email me and ask me questions like that, I, you know, I tell them, listen, just just live your life and keep, you know, keep your eyes open. I mean, I don't know. I mean, to tell you where to go to be safe, I mean, I'd have to be God to know that. I don't know. That's exactly right. There's no way we can know that stuff. I mean, do you think the people in Botswana felt pretty safe? I mean, they hadn't had an earthquake there since, like, God made the earth. And all of a sudden, they've got this, like, almost seven-point earthquake in the middle of Botswana, which is my next evidence point. We're getting earthquakes in diverse places, my brother. Well, see, now, there's a lot of things that I could agree on. The earthquakes are one of them. There's, they have definitely picked up, and uh, the ring of fire is on fire, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and I think anybody that takes an honest look at that and does any light research at the National Geographic uh, web, or National Ge- Geological Survey uh, website, you go there, you can see the earthquakes, you can play around with the earthquake map, and even the data which we think that they manipulate is enough to kind of make your hair stand up. But what really disturbs me about this earthquake in uh, Botswana last week, though, it and then a sub, it was an earlier earthquake in the opposite part of the world in Russia. These were two in the middle of the plate earthquakes. They're not supposed to happen like that. I mean, they do, but that like that's showing that Earth is getting stretched and pulled. And I mean, we just don't get earthquakes in Botswana, man. We just don't. 
Well, and that's it. You're seeing earthquakes in places where there's not usually earthquakes, which I tell people now, if you think you're in an area where, you know, you're never going to have to deal with an earthquake, be ready for an earthquake because they can happen anywhere on this planet. Right, and I think that's just practical. We know, I mean, if you live in California, you're going to deal with earthquakes or Alaska, you know. Mm -hmm. People have been dealing with earthquakes for a long time, but they have gotten progressively worse. It's just another data point. Absolutely. And, Steve, we've got to take a break here. Uh, all right. Steve, we are back. And uh, sorry, we had a little extra long of a break because I promised somebody I would use that music and, and run it. So there it I was is. Enjoying, I was thoroughly enjoying it. Well, yeah, me too. I, I liked it a lot too. I've listened to it about probably six, seven times already today. So, <laughs> oh, especially when you grew up. Like I don't know how old you are, but I listened to the country version of that growing up around a bunch of rednecks. <laughs> I'm forty five. Little uh, rock makes me happy there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I grew up in Rochester, New York, and we had the uh, ninety six WCMF there. I used to listen to that a lot. And we had 98.9 The Buzz, and they played a lot of 80s music. I don't know. I, you know, I, For me, it's like right across the board, just about anything. Uh, if I like it, it doesn't matter what, what kind of music it is. Just some things I like, and if I like it, I like it. I mean, there's yeah. some rap I like. There's there's heavy metal, some heavy metal I like. I, it varies. So, I, like people say, what kind of music you into? It's like, I don't know. I just got to like it. Yeah, that's a hard one for me too, Michael, I, I'll tell you. But um, one of the things that we were talking about as we go down our list, and remember, I got, I got, you gave me points for uh, David Bowie, by the way, and I really wanted to thank you for that. <laughs> okay. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is volcanism. And, and when I hear, if I hear one more person say, if these things are so close, like you say, Steve Wilson, then wouldn't we be having all kinds of cataclysmic activity across the earth? I, and I look around the earth and I go, we are having cataclysmic activity all over the earth. Has anybody seen the weather recently? <laughs> well, yeah, and the weather, I mean, we just went through an episode uh, here in South Carolina, two episodes, Monday of last week and Wednesday, um, where we had, I mean, I literally seen the rotation over us as, as, as the cloud cover and stuff passed over. We didn't get hit as bad as others, but I mean, this is the first time, and I've been in South Carolina now for not, over nine years. This is the first time I've seen them uh, get the kids out of school early because of storms, if, unless it was snow. I mean, they'll close down the whole state for a snow flurry. But, mm -hmm. you know, usually for thunderstorms, I've never <laughs> seen that before, but that's what they did. Well, again, you know, it's it's. I'm just saying that the weather has, you know, I think everybody can agree, has gotten increasingly worse, increasingly strange, increasingly chaotic. Volcanism has increased. We just had two major earthquakes from uh, or volcanoes that haven't been live. They're in Russia, up in the Kamchatka area, and those things are blowing their stacks right now. And right now, we have a record number of volcanoes going off in the world right now, Michael. You're right about that, too. I mean, so, yeah, you know, I'll give you credit, Steve. You are definitely bringing up points that, you know, stuff that could be proven. I mean, this is it's a real deal. I mean, yes. Look, I don't care if you think it's Planet X or not. I really don't. I don't care if people think it's never. I, I, I have seen enough now in this last year of research that I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that something is up. Yeah. Big time up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. Military movement. I mean, let's just think about that. Why are they moving troops all over God's creation? It wasn't under the Trump administration they were doing it. They were doing it under Obama. Oh, hell, they were doing it back with Bush. I mean, you, you had movements. I remember talking with John Moore, and he said they were moving facilities to Colorado. Uh, well, that's my other data point, and that is guys like John Moore. He was one of the guys that pushed me over the ledge, and I've had John on my show, too, and I love John. And John is a honorable man, and he has. I know that I can trust him and his contacts. And you, if if you have, if ever, you guys have ever heard John Moore's story, he talks about Navy admirals that you know leveled with him and told him what was up. And yes, I've had John Moore on the show. Uh, matter of fact, he was on my show probably the first few weeks I started this show. I had him on uh, a long time ago, and he's been on a few times since. Um, 
he doesn't say a whole lot about Planet X no more. He's gotten to the point where he, I guess he tells me that, you know, he's done preaching to people. You know, it's it's there. If you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, you don't. But I, but he does still talk about it. I hear him sometimes. Um, I do, too. He'll, he's been trying to speak on it lately again because people are so interested in it again, you know. And it's one of those kind of things where, you know, he's got to make a living. I get it. That is the most that listeners email me about. I'm not going to kid you out. Of, I get tons of email, and a good deal of it has to do with Planet X. It's questions about Planet X, and I'm honest with the listeners. Like, listen, I'm not, you know, Planet X Mike or anything like that. I, I don't proclaim to be an expert on it. I, I do shows on it because the listeners want it. They, they tell me they want it. They say, you got to get this guy on. That's how I found out about you, Steve. Someone said, you got to get this guy on. So here you are. You're on. Well, and we're trying to approach it without having a Messiah complex or without having a, you know, we do talk about religion. You know, we're, you know, I, I claim to be a Zen Christian. I, I believe in, like, the power of love and all that. I'm like that kind of person, right? Mm hmm and we do talk about those kinds of issues, but we try to keep it on the level. We try to do it with tongue in cheek. We don't want to approach it with fear. We want to approach it like a science project, and that's the way we've done it over the last year, and I think it's worked. Oh, yeah, and I say, hey, it was good enough for my ancestors. It'll be good enough for me. I mean, why be afraid of any of this? It's, things right. are going to happen. the ones that survived the last cataclysm. <laughs> oh, yeah, and <laughs> I mean, and, and to be afraid of death is just, I mean, you're, you're wasting your life because... There's one one thing we know we're we're all gonna die at least our physical form so you know why why fear it just uh, shit have fun <laughs> before it's well, over no and I'll tell you something about researching this for the last year and a lot of people this surprises them when I tell them they're like are you depressed about this yeah sometimes I get it does weigh you down because you're just like man first of all I'm not lying and people call me a liar I hate that more than anything because I don't lie I might be wrong. I might be stupid, I might be <laughs> you know, misled or misguided, but I will never lie. I swear, I just don't. Uh, and, but anyway, and, not to be defensive. And I appreciate um, that because I, you know, that's what I say. You know, like I've had guys on who have told me things like Andrew Bishago for one. And he gets mad when I say it. I think he gets mad anyways. But, uh, you know, at the end of the show, I'll say he definitely believes what he's telling me. And so, you know, that doesn't mean he's it's right or wrong, but he's not lying. I mean, he really believes what he's saying. So, right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. who am I that to say it didn't that. happen? I don't know. I wasn't there. So, you know. Okay, so now let's go down Bob Fletcher's road, right? And I don't you know you probably know Bob. I've had Bob on I think two or three times now. He's a good man. I know he he his his health is failing from time to time, guys, and you know, I worry about him, but Anyway, so um, Bob, he was one of the early guys that was, like, trying to report on it, but he was coming off of the Sonny Bono investigation, if you'll remember. Mm. Bob was one of the lead investigators for Sonny Bono in a congressional investigation into drug dealing, I think, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And um, it led to, you know, this bigger investigation where Bob found out that the government's been hiding literally trillions of dollars, Right. And then he started to learn that they were building these huge tunneling systems all over the United States. Now, I think that's a credible story. Well, yeah, well, he's again, he certainly sound convincing. And, and here's the thing. I mean, we know that these uh, these underground, these tunneling systems throughout uh, underneath the United States, they do exist. I mean, so I know he's not lying about it. I mean, and I've seen pictures of what looks like farms underground. I mean, they've they really got a good setup down there. Okay, so here's another data point that that makes it a little bit more of a sense of urgency in terms of my concern. But you know, is we're seeing the rich buying like bunkers in like on record numbers right now. Why are they doing that? They absolutely are, and as a matter of fact, some of them are trying to buy areas that have reservoirs. Um, you know, of fresh water. I mean, I don't know. They're bottling that stuff up for themselves or what they're doing, but. Who knows, right? I mean, it's just another data point. Just going through my data points is all I'm doing. I'm just trying to see yeah. if, if all these things corroborate in any way. And, and listen, I, what I want to do here real quick is let's take a call. We've got a caller. I think this is our, our friend KJ from New York uh, hanging on the line here. I'll bring him on, and while he's uh speaking with you i'll start getting some of these other pictures loaded up that you sent yeah we'll go we'll talk through those so all right uh let's go we got is this kj in new york 
Hey, Mike, thanks for taking my call. Oh, you bet. Thanks for calling in. Welcome aboard. This is awesome. You know, Steve, I just want to reach out to you and let you know someone here in New York City is right there with you, supporting you 100%, um, spreading the gospel. Uh, I love you and Wayne. I listen to you guys every day. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, Steve, trust me. This is all coming together. This is all happening. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of look at it from just a broader perspective. I've kind of been one of those people who's always t- uh, tended to stand back, and I just have like a wide view of what's going on. And uh, there's definitely something happening. Now, you know, and that, I think what happens is that's what they want us to do. They want us to all kind of pigeonhole ourselves so that they can say we're crazy, whether we call it one thing or another. Or, but the reality is all signs point to, as I say to everyone, that's my line. Because people ask me all the time, oh, what's going on? I heard about this. You know, a couple of years ago, they all said I was out of my mind. Now, the same, very same people are now more into researching stuff, and now they're sending me stuff, you know, and I, I just, I've actually pulled back because I accept what's happening. Now, I myself, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I'm, I, I'm a, you know, believer in what I believe, and I fear nothing. If anything, I'm looking quite forward to uh, the change that I know is coming. So uh, how do you feel about that and knowing what you know? How are you feeling just within yourself uh, about what you uh, think is going to happen in the future? Yeah, right. Good question. Um, So I'm pretty locked down on this script that we see in the book of Revelation and the prophets, the Old Testament and the Judeo-Christian Abrahamic phase. Right. And I think I see I think I think there's enough credibility to the their the success and what they foretold so far and what's happening especially the book of daniel right and yeah. isaiah and i look at those as kind of my guidelines i believe that they point to a change where um where this is going to root this event or series of events is cle- it's going to cleanse the earth yeah. it's going to cleanse the earth that's what i believe is going to happen yeah and, you know, I also truly believe that uh, the powers that be, and I've spoken with Michael about this with other yeah. guests, that, that people in power, trust me, they're very well aware from the Vatican right down to all the leaders of these countries. And that's why people are doing what they're doing, whether it's trying to get into bunkers, whether it's trying to prepare. And, and people always ask me, they're like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you going to do? You know, you live in Brooklyn. It's probably the worst place to be. And I tell them all the same thing. The worst place to be is wherever you are. The best place to be is wherever you are. It's all a matter of perspective <laughs> and your belief system. I truly believe in what I believe as a Christian and where, where I am with my faith and what I do as a human being and how I give back and contribute positively to society and what I do. So I'm, I, you know, it doesn't matter. I could be in the Ozarks. I could be in Alaska. I could be in Brooklyn. If I'm going to be saved, I'm going to be saved. And I'm just preparing for that next phase. And I, I think a lot of people are so caught up in believing that all these rich people are going to go underground and they're going to survive and they're going to be the only ones. That they'll, I think they'll, that's- they'll be trapped in sardine cans. That's what's going to... Because, listen, right. how the hell can you make a judgment of how... I mean, where do you think that you're going to have be able to build something strong enough to deal... Right. I mean, this is the biggest force Mother Nature will ever throw at this planet, probably. You're yeah. telling me you know more than Mother Nature? Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah good well, luck with that. I, I'm the same way, guys. I, I look at this and I go, all right, so we really don't have any control of where, where, where's and when's and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to know specifics. Right. I get that, right? Here's what's happening to me, and I know this is going to sound completely crazy. Well, I appreciate every trip to the convenience store. I appreciate every time I can grab a Coke. I appreciate right. every my the sweetness of just the little things of modern life are so sweet to me now that I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right. And, and, and it's funny you say that because I've been telling people, you know, I've been teaching people how to farm and how to grow stuff even here in Brooklyn where I am. And people at first, they thought I was crazy. And now they all know me as the farmer. And I said, yeah, just remember that. When things go bad, remember who the farmer is. Right. And they Do look not kill the farmer. Crazy. He's going to grow your food. Right. <laughs> like, in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely putting myself in a situation where people are aware of the good works that I'm doing, where I am and what I'm doing. And, and because I've had, I've had dreams and visions that, and messages that I'm, I'm to do what I'm doing. And at this point, I'm, I'm literally spending my own money to do these projects and, and just to make where I live nicer and better, but to teach people to get back because, and it's funny you say that about even soda and stuff. I tell people, I say, do yourself a favor, wean yourself off of soda, cigarettes, uh, junk food, because at a certain point, there's not going to be any more of this stuff. And the withdrawal you're going to go through is going to be so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Kool-Aid man's going to die. The the oh, Marlboro right. man's going to fall off his horse. You could forget about it all. <laughs> yeah, Jack well, Daniels, actually, forget about it. Yeah. Um, and if you, the, you the, know, the, I the would whole, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steve. No, I was just going to continue talking about what, what I think this is going to do. So I also, I do comparative religion. It was like a big deal for me when I was in Bible school. And one of the, one of the religions I really appreciate a lot is Buddhism. And Buddhism actually, believe it or not, believes that cataclysm is a natural process of life meant to cleanse the earth. The Hindus believe that exactly. cataclysm events are here to the Shiva slash, uh, right. what is their other deity? Um, Bali, Kali, Kali, Bali. Oh. Right. And so you look at, it's not just Christianity that has these eschatologies, it's also these world right. religions. That's another point that I'm going to make, by the way, uh, Michael, in terms of supporting this. And they all talk about this as an event where it just basically recreates an Eden when it's gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right. so, I mean, I look at that, I look at mo almost every story does say that it's going to turn out to be cool after it's over with. Well, well that's, and that's, and that's what I always explain. I try to tell people, I say... If and when this does happen, whatever the event may be, it's going to be a bitch. Trust me. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> but no. if you do survive the cataclysm, you've got to be prepared for what's next. And it's not going to be anything like the world you live in now. Well, you know, people should focus on skills and should, you know, here's the thing that scared me is in October, Michael. It, they, um, if you remember, Obama signed a big raft of, of executive orders in October, and they are all yeah. about national defense, uh, national preparedness for disasters, asteroids, blah blah yeah. blah. I mean, it was like spelled right out. And one of the yeah. things that the you know, that the uh, bureaucracy under Obama or any president now Trump, they have the right to confiscate all goods, all hoarded materials. They can take everything and use anything and distribute it as they see fit. And that is in now in law. I mean, in executive orders. Period. Well, and, and guys, I still worry. I know, Steve, you said that they'll shut these nuclear facilities down. But, okay, let's say they're waiting. You know, let, let's assume they think they're smart enough. How about if uh, Planet X, before it gets anywhere near us, uh, it, it gets, sends a, uh, perturbs the sun and a flare hits wow. us. And so... Right. I, you know, survive and be great as long as those things are not a threat. And that's my only worry because well, something like that, I wouldn't want to survive. Not with those well, things. And, my, and, and Michael, to your point on that, you know, I, and it's funny. I know you say, you know, and a lot of people think about nuclear facilities mm -hmm. and they do have capabilities to take down that system. But what people don't understand or realize, forget about nuclear, because for every one nuclear plant, there are industries all over this country that run on cooling systems, like really like sub below zero cooling systems in order to keep certain things operating, whether it's like here in New York, the steam system for Con Edison. Let me tell you something. If that doesn't, kept, if that's not kept properly and maintained at a certain level, that could be a hundred times worse than a nuclear uh, error because of the explosion that could occur. So there are facilities throughout the United States that re rely on these cooling systems.
Well, and look, if there's no power, you know, no power to keep them going, there's going to be these massive explosions well, in all of these. Yeah. And I'll say it again, the earth is wired for demolition. So we oh, yeah. we really we need a little luck. So your survival skills are great and we need those too. But you're gonna need a little luck because think about it. Gas stations all over the place that are gonna be blowing yeah. up. You're gonna have gas lines going through neighborhoods and houses that are so there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna happen. It's gonna be it's gonna be probably the number one movie at the box office before you know before it ends with Bambi dying and you crying. You oh, I think, I think I that brings up another know. point, which is uh, the whole preparations that we've seen, these FEMA camps. Come on. I'm not imagining right. this, am I? Oh, no. Those FEMA camps. And, and, you know, I've said it before as it, a joke, but I'm not joking. I mean, if they really want to get people in those FEMA camps, all, especially after a catastrophe like that, all they got to do is say, hey, we've got generators, we've got microwaves and food, and yeah, free Wi-Fi, so you can yeah, go look up. Spots, right. Oh, yeah, here's an Xbox, and, uh, you know, yeah. go ahead. they'll, they'll run in there. What most people will do, because they're so, I call it the, the digital addiction, they're so, there was just a report on 60 Minutes about it. And uh, how now um, these companies like Google, they're, they're creating these apps that literally are like crack. I mean, they're just total like addictive mind control systems. It's so obvious to a person oh, yeah. with average intelligence. But let's face it, most people, they don't even have a day supply of food in their refrigerator. If they have no cell phone service, no food, no water, they're going to line up to go to these camps. They're going to run to these camps. Oh, yeah, and think about all the people uh, who, who are going to need stuff to stay alive. I mean, you know. How about just, just, just pharmaceutical yeah. drugs alone? In New York City, 90% of people are on <laughs> prescription drugs for depression, for all these that different things. That is... That will be your zombie apocalypse. It won't yeah, be the, the people. Zombies. Yeah, it won't be right. the people who need diabetic medication. It'll nope. be the ones who have been on their opioids, and they're gonna. Right. Do, oh yeah, they're gonna be like, hey, we need our fix. Oh, I, they, I tell people, I tell people that all the time. The reason why they perpetuate these zombie movies and all this stuff and the violence and everything is conditioning. Oh, and you ever see somebody on meth? I mean, come on, oh, man. I there's feel, your zombie. Yeah. Forget math. How about that other stuff with that synthetic marijuana? Those are real zombies. We had a huge problem with that in Brooklyn. Oh, that stuff was ago. horrible, man. Oh, my God. Just, I'm, yeah. and all I saw. Or, or I you know, double. also the story that came out of South America a couple weeks ago, we learned about this devil's breath, which is actually yeah. creates a zombie person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've heard of that too. I mean, and just think, there's people who are going to be so addicted to this stuff, and boy, let something yeah. like that happen. And I mean, that and this is goes without saying why your government, uh, top government officials, one of the biggest reasons they're not going to tell you about it. They, they don't want those zombies getting to them. They want to close their doors first and let us and deal I with truly, the zombies. Yeah, and yeah, I truly right. believe. <laughs> I truly believe, unfortunately, Steve, and we're going to see it sooner than later. I think they're going to shut down the internet. To be honest with you, I think now, that's where we're going with... right now. We we have totally invested ourselves in trying to survive the shutdown of the social media platforms. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Go ahead. No, that's okay. But I truly believe that is part of the plan. They're going to have to shut down the internet. Um, if, if once, whatever is, you know, I don't like to call it planet X cause to me, it just simplifies things and it makes it, I just say it's a planetary system. Let's face it. We live on this silly little planet rotating around the sun in an infinite field of space. I mean, to think, you know, <laughs> that there are a, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other planetary objects floating around in this infinite space, you're a, you're, you'd be crazy to not think that. And so I truly believe that once it does get within full vision of the majority of people, and it's no longer denied, and they can't cover it anymore with the trailing and the chemicals. Um, and just on another note about that, I work in technology, and I do a lot of work with projectors and projection. Uh, yeah. Aluminum is what they use 
as the reflective matter in the, the screening and all the type of stuff that they use when they want to project stuff and get a nice luminosity. So one, I think they're definitely chemtrailing for multi-purpose um, to hide. They, they've been doing it here in New York all of a sudden, you know, and it hadn't been happening much, but I noticed all of a sudden they've been doing it a lot now in New York. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? Cause this is not normal for New York. And, uh, but uh, the luminosity factor of that, because I believe they're definitely trying to, one, block whatever's up there, two, reflect the radiation of the sun, because the sun here is powerful. I mean, I'm, I was out in the sun for two days working, and I am as red as I would be if it was summertime. That's how powerful the sun is in New York right now. All right. So, well, you know, well, but, uh, I just had a deja vu ball. just now, like a really wicked one. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Well, I really yeah, I don't know if you've ever had deja vu before, before, you guys, but I just had a strong one just now. A strong yeah. what? Deja vu. Oh, deja vu. Okay. Well, hey. yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I'm glad I was a part of that, and uh, <laughs> my, I, I appreciate you taking my call. Yo, Steve, rock on. Wayne, tell him I said hi. Love you guys. And uh, I'm glad I got to speak with you before they shut down the internet and before the shit really hits the fan. But I'm right there with you, brother. Right on, man. We'll make it through some way, somehow. All right, yeah, KJ. We'll, we'll meet up. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for your call. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. All right, I got. I'm gonna let you go though because we got we got another call. We'll take that in just a few minutes. Be patient there in Arizona. I want to get through a few more of these photos before we uh, take another call, uh, Steve. I've got one here that you sent me, and I see snow on ro on a roof, and there seems to be what would I guess be an object up in the sky over the power lines. That's right. So that's another one of those FAA cams, which have been very, very good. Now, <clears throat> if you go back to one of my videos, on several videos, I actually have a uh, time lapse of this red orb. It rotates, Michael. Mm, it rotates. It rotates. Well, that would be interesting to see then. So, so I mean, like time lapse uh, photos or video? Right, I have time lapse on uh, one of my videos where I act where it actually rotates and people can go check it. Um, but I mean, we and then I really take the gamma up to see if it's an object or not. I haven't decided if it's a refraction or the actual object yet. I still haven't gotten past that, and I've been looking this, at this thing now for a couple months. I think that it is definitely not as part of our solar system. Let's just put it that way. Okay. All right, so then we've got another one here. This one, it's uh, blue sky with, it looks like some chemtrail there, but I see uh, an object in the middle of all that. It says 33 right, degrees Fahrenheit. Right, it's a bloom sky. Bloom sky is one of these, these are the little odd ways that we get pictures, is that bloom sky was designed to be a personal weather network. So these people buy these little cameras and they put it up on the network and they're literally all over the world, hundreds of these bloom sky cameras. And they are high-definition cameras that look up in the sky. And as you'll notice, there's no sun here to create a flare in the frame. Right. And it kind of resembles the last object we were just looking at. I see like a break in it there. You know, like a yeah, you're crack. trying to see a pattern here, aren't you? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I see the same pattern. I didn't mean to lead you. but I No, just, no, I'm that's saying, I, I Trust me. And if this one's in my knot. So and it's it's in the same approximation of the sky as what we saw in Alaska, and they're, you know, both north. Right, and what I try to, I mean, I I've had like I've even had you know, moderators and stuff, people who are close to me, who you know they're so convinced that it's out there that I mean, just everything is real to them. And for me, I always tell people, you know investigate don't take what like like take what steve's giving you tonight take what i give you take what other guests give you use that as an avenue to to do your own research and determine because it's going to come down to you know some people you know they believe everything it is and then there's others who believe nothing is and so you know same problem with those people don't just throw everything in the waste paper basket because you just never know so you know i say take this stuff and use it uh to guide your own research right i mean everyone should do their own 
research on top of, you know. Don't... I never tell you what to think, right? I'll right. tell you what I think. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think I'm seeing. But people need to do their own research. We encourage that, too. I'm right on board with you. But I'm going to take this thing for a hard right for just a second. Okay. I think that there's there's going to be something about aliens associated with this. And I'd like to just bring that up. All right. And I know it's a touchy subject, and a lot of people, you know, don't know quite what to think about it. Some people, like the Christians, like you were saying on, uh, I think you were with David Mead the other day, a lot of Christians will say automatically that if they see an alien or know about an alien, it's automatically a devil. I, I just can't accept that. I think that there might be a good chance that what we thought were angels back in Abraham's day were actually just aliens. I'm with you, brother. That's what I say. And, and you know, it's... If you if you take what I mean, if you use a rational mind and you think rationally, uh, you common use some common sense. You look back at a lot of this stuff from two thousand years ago is when they say it's from. It's even older than that, and and you look at the stuff and now look at what we could do today, and it kind of makes sense that there was some kind of advanced civilization that was interfering with these people well, you go back that far i mean i say all the time drop me off let me go there with a helicopter to put me back a couple thousand years give me a helicopter give me a cell phone and i don't know, give me a couple lighters oh let me give you a good example of that is nimrod right so i my christian brothers and sisters man they make themselves look so dogmatic and so irrigid and so just let's think about nimrod for a second okay <laughs> so what was Nimrod doing exactly? So they were building a supposedly a tower to reach heaven. Now, to me, the, when I was a child, I thought of that as being a big clay tower like of ancient times and God got pissed and you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? That's the vision you get when you're a kid uh, growing up in a Catholic house, okay? All right. So somebody twisted me on that i think it was gordon uh i think it was graham hancock actually twisted me up on that one right mm -hmm. what if that they were actually building like a big huge device that actually would crack open multi-dimensions and they'd be able to walk in and talk to like god quote unquote what if they were really doing something super high tech like cern yeah why why do we automatically assume that because his name is nimrod that they're stupid yeah, well, well that's talk a... about a vilified person, man. You want to talk about a PR disaster? Nimrod is vilified. Why was he vilified? Because he tried to build a device. Really? Well, exactly. And I it... think we pissed off aliens. We didn't piss God off. Well, I think so too. And you know, I, I have so many questions when it comes to that. And it depends who you talk to. If you talk to hardcore religious person, they're going to have every answer in the book for you. And well, ask them where Melchizedek came from. I'm sure they'd have an answer for it. Not that it'd be acceptable to but me, they but... Do, they're not an honest scholar, because if you talk to Michael Heiser, who's, in my opinion, the best Christian scholar in the world, he will tell you nobody knows where Melchizedek came from. Well, right. And, you know, and, and according to uh, Scripture, you know, God said, uh, let us make uh, man or something along those lines in our image. Who's our? There's more than one, so... Yeah, and that's what's something that, by the way, oh gosh, Heiser's coming out with a book uh, about Enoch coming up here pretty soon. We're gonna, we all got to jump on him on that one because the book of Enoch is incredibly important. It was mentioned in the New Testament, and it's the oldest book or, or writings that they found, and they also found corroborating um, uh, fragments in the Dead Sea Scrolls that validated that that was a that was a true work, right? That was a part of the Jewish canon at least and uh back in the day and that book of enoch talks about giants it talks about aliens it talks about all kinds of stuff oh well, yeah and uh you know apparently uh jesus says my kingdom is not of this uh planet or not of this world or something along those lines and i mean if you take their message if you look at what they're trying to tell you me personally i think that the bible if you you should start reading it from the back to the front and i think you could start it out over on mars to be honest with you i think uh, again you know to, to again for honest christian scholars people that really know what they're talking about know better than to make any claims on you know the authority of certain scriptures and stuff like that they'll even tell you that the scriptures were mistranslated or used for personal gain and all that good stuff come on now don't, <laughs> don't be don't be foolish i just say don't be foolish 
But could I believe that um, God is love? I'm on it. I'm on that. I oh, love yeah. that idea. And that if God is love, like the way I believe love is, then I, you know, I'll, I'll hold on to that. You guys can take whatever else you want. No, I, d I do believe in an almighty God energy, this power, this, because if you look at everything throughout the universe and throughout our solar system, it's all designed in a way where everything counts on everything. I mean, if you pull Jupiter out right now, it would change everything. If you, if you, you know, you come on earth and you get rid of say the bees or get rid of all the trees or do something like that. And it or, changes. Or just change the value of an elect of all electrons and you completely change reality. Exactly. I mean, so everything is in such a fine balance. I have to believe there was some serious thought that went into everything that is. Now, that being said, uh, you look at the human race now and we could now, uh, they could make synthetic DNA in the laboratory and they could actually create their own human being now. I mean, so would then those scientists be the god of of that creation? I mean, so... What's to well, say let's not that dance around it? I'm talking about the Anunnaki. Yeah. Okay? okay. That's what I'm talking about. And I am a hardcore fundamentalist, raised Catholic, turned into a Protestant, got up ordained, went to Bible school guy, okay? Born again, all that, right? I'll tell you what, I run into this Anunnaki thing, man, and it causes me to question hard. Because there is a pretty good record. Uh, in the Sumerian texts that talk about these Anunnaki being somehow part of a genetic experiment. Yeah, well, look what we're doing now. I mean, we're doing all these things that, you know, used to be just... It can't, well, it's not impossible. We're doing it. Exactly. And we can do this. I'm right. I mean, we can do it now. So, so when people say, no, that's impossible, it's like, well, I can't talk to you then because you can't, you can't put enough... Some people will not get outside of their little safe zones and uh, you know it's it's just the truth of the matter but that's the problem with only having a lifespan of 80 years in my opinion Michael. it is it is i i agree with you i mean i, I love the work i'm doing so much uh, people say i wouldn't want to live 200 years well me doing this right now i would because I, I would i yeah. you know look i take 600 maybe a thousand years that's what i would think oh. would be an ideal lifespan oh me. yeah give me a thousand years man i could catch up on sleep i'd have time you actually know? write that book that you're meaning to write <laughs> yeah. or do those taxes you've been procrastinating on or whatever <laughs> exactly so i mean there's so much all right let's let's look at one more photo and then we'll take another call um this one is it looks like some kind of radar patterns Right, so what this is called, <clears throat> excuse me, Oop. this is a magnetopause, uh, and it's a tool that, that that NASA has that we we get, we got. I got really good at all this stuff, Michael. Man, I I could drive all their software now, man. It's so fun. But anyway, so this comes from the NASA, um, what we call the, the I think this is the X cut, is what they call it. Yeah, X cut, and this is basically looking down on the Earth, and what you're seeing to the right in this picture. And that red beam around the Earth, yeah. that's the force of the energy coming from the sun and then passing over the Earth from the magnetosphere, okay? And you can see the Earth, the black dot there, is actually holding back that huge energy, right? Right. Now, what's unusual and bad and weird and strange about the stuff that we saw on the 4th, and we also saw this again, we've seen this in multiple times, but there's a pattern starting to emerge. Every 80 days, it gets worse. So 80 days ago, we looked, and sure enough, we were seeing this. But this, these anomalies that we saw like this indicate magnetic disturbance in the inner solar system. No other way to look at it. And where do these uh, graphs actually come from? They come from the NASA Integrated Space Weather Site. And okay. um, actually, I'll, I'll give you the link here so people can go take a look at it and see what they... But the, these, these images, when we get them, if we don't get them real time from people that are watching it real time... NASA usually will have those down within an hour. Oh, yeah, they're good at covering stuff up. They'll put it out there just long enough for you to look crazy if you don't save it. Well, again, that's a big part of what they try to do is they try to make us all look crazy. All right. Okay. But, you know, I mean, I know I'm crazy, so they don't have to try. Oh, yeah, well, but I've been called worse, that's for sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, my God, yes. I sure have. Let's take our, our next call here. We've got, uh, I think this is Robert in Phoenix, Arizona. Am I correct? 
You are absolutely correct, Michael. Thank you uh, for allowing me to be on with uh, yourself and Steve. What a great show. Um, uh, Steve, you're awesome, man. I follow you all the time. Uh, you just put great information up constantly, man, and I appreciate that. And I know what uh, YouTube has done to a lot of people, including you, and uh, just just screwing with everybody. But I know it's a been a tough road for everybody, but I applaud you for what you've been doing and just not backing down from these SOBs who uh, basically want to control uh, all information because they know it's coming and, uh, you know, they, they just want to be the game leaders as this whole system comes down, brother. So I applaud you. You know what? I also say this. There's a lot of people standing up to this nonsense. Uh, they're just not putting up with it anymore. Hence the fake news. Nobody's believing the, the mainstream media propaganda media anymore. No one's buying the bullshit and the nonsense. So I think everything's turning, and it's part of the progressive change that we are all facing. Uh, you know, with 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 our uh, with our few uh, you know brown dwarfs out there that are coming in, and well, not coming in, are in. And getting ready to, you know, make a few changes here. And, and I think those changes are, for, are the best, brother. What do you What do you say? Yeah, I do. Again, I'm back to this again. I think that anything that will dislodge this beast system from our world, and it's going to be painful, man. It's going to be like a bad surgery um, is the way I look at it. I feel like we're diseased right now. And, you, get, you know, maybe people are going to think I'm crazy when I say this, but I really mean this. I, it's just like... It's gotten so bad and so evil and so deeply rooted in every part of our government, in our infrastructure, in our corporates, uh, you know, areas and all that finance. And it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's almost like I, I'm. there's a part of me that just wants this to come, not because, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to any kind of cataclysm. I'm just looking forward to these bastards not being in control anymore. See, and I, I'm in total agreement with what you just said. I mean, if you think about the idea of what's being uh uh, now come, all coming forward, by the way, of all this pedophilia, this this child sex trafficking, just human trafficking, this satanic abuse of people. I mean, it's beyond belief, right? And this it has is been most going on for just the better part of 40 it. years. Yeah. And it's like, not, you know, it's like when people would say something like that. But I'll, let me, let's have a really good example. I think the Syrian missile attack where the United States bombed that, um, you know, used Tomahawk missiles or whatever to, to bomb those things. You know, it's like I've noticed the world that I'm in right now, the truthers, it's like we all looked at that and said, that is such BS. No, that wasn't a, a gas attack by the Syrians. We figured that out like in two seconds. Right. Didn't we, Michael? Which we always do, right? We always do. Yeah. And then what ends up, what ends up happening? The, the, the propaganda news media press propagates it, tries to get everybody, you know, uh, to believe it, and it's just not working anymore. And that's part of the massive change that's taking place. So I think, like, you know, I've talked with Michael about this. I think it's all coming to a point, and, uh, you know, the, to the head of the spear. And all these changes are going to take place all at once because humanity is ready for the next level of existence and consciousness. I think that's where we're really headed is the next level of consciousness. Everybody's well, here's waking the thing. up I'm glad you so brought many that ideas, because, Steve. No, I'm sorry. I'm glad you brought up the consciousness part of this because that's part of what I'm coming to realize is that, you know, if you really think about it, it's like without consciousness, there is no spirit, right? That's There's right. no thing, such thing as spirituality if, unless you can acknowledge consciousness. So, you know, that's why I claim to be a Zen Christian because if you really understand that the, that consciousness is ultimately that is the most powerful thing in the universe and then we've got quantum physics actually confirming it is That's anybody right. paying attention to this absolutely i mean you were talking about earlier you know that yes they can create you know these clones but guess what they're just creating meat puppets because they don't have the ability to actually uh, entice or capture a uh, a, a, a conch, you know pure consciousness to inhabit that, uh, you know, uh, uh, meat automaton to animate it. They don't have that ability. Yes, they can create body parts. They can create hearts. They can create from pigs. They can create all kinds of things. But they'll never be able to animate it because it comes down to freedom of will, freedom of choice. And 
that consciousness, like myself, yourself, and everybody else who inhabits these physical, uh, you know, biological containers, to make to have them be animated to have a physical experience. That's what they don't understand. They think they control. You know, uh, they, they think they're gods, but what they really are is just um, experimental artists playing playing with things that they have no control over. That's all. Right. That's what you know. They may have been all able to catch. They have, uh, just one more thing, Steve. They Sorry, may yeah. have been they've been able to catch capture the technology from the little guys, you know, the little gray guys who were basically uh, who are in. Um, well, I believe they still are, you know, again, anatomical, biological beings, but their technology, which goes into the millions and millions and millions of years, who have the ability and understanding of the universe and how things work, to animate these uh, biological beings, and I don't think they're even any sort of conscious capture souls, but just because their technology is so incredible, to animate them, take down these crafts, and you create the anti-gravitic technology. So here we are. We have this, you know, the 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 the, the uh, breakaway civilization with the anti-technology for the, what better part of seventy years, Steve? Maybe a little bit more. But oh they, yeah, I agree. Forty-nine and on. Yep. Yeah, but they haven't been able to do what I just said. So they're, they, you know, they think they're playing God, but what they're actually doing is annihilating themselves and along with us they're going to annihilate our species because they have the technology for all for all of humanity to actually froth this this uh, in- incoming system that's going to cause a lot of problems on this planet and they're in there you know what their scenarios they say let them die who cares that was exactly what inky and or um, and Lil said you know let them die we don't want we you know, we don't we don't need them. We created them, right? So here we are once again repeating history. And uh, Rascala, he's our Saturday host here, Red Pill Reality Show. He asked, "Does anyone have any idea when this will be evident in the sky and can no longer be hidden?" And I guess that's the big question, isn't it? It is, and it's the million dollar question, right? So if you're listening to David Mead, who I know is your friend, Michael, um, David thinks it's this fall, and. I've, I've learned never, ever, especially with something like this, unless I have the hard data in my hands, you don't say a date. You don't t- talk about dates because it's just going to make it, you know, the odds of you being wrong, if we haven't had an asteroid strikes in recent human memory, like we talked about before, what makes you think you're going to pick the day and the hour that an asteroid's going to hit? Shut up. Well, I, I guess they more want to know, like, what year? I mean, how, like, how close? Do we know where it is? Well, and I if- think we're in a seven-year window right now. So my opinion, this is my just my opinion, is it all really started to come together in 2012. And then what we've been going through since 2012 is we've been actually going through the dance with this other star. So we're not traveling. There's, It's not like coming to the sun and going around the sun and going out. These are two objects that are moving through space at like 70,000 kilometers per second or whatever the number is, right? And they are, they are basically binary, so they're traveling together in unison through space in a forward motion. They are not orbiting each other. They are orbiting each other. One doesn't orbit the other one. So we've been but seeing this interaction or- playing out both- since 2012 in a big way. And I think this year, man, I really do think there's going to be – there's got to be some kind of a disclosure – we see this orange ball show up all the time, man. We had one guy in Germany that caught it, and it came up over the roof of his house, man. It was three-dimensional. It was an orange orb. It was close. <laughs> you know, it's just more and more of this stuff is going to happen. I just believe that, you know, we're in the window of it. I really do. All right. Anything else there, Robert, before we hit yeah, our – we got to break in about four minutes. So go ahead. You, you got it. But I was just going to say that they were both – but because they're – Either and I'm not sure 100%, Steve, and I'm not sure if you are. Um, but since Scott's been talking with the, you know, uh, physicist, um, um, I, I'm just wondering: you, do you believe, do you believe we're a binary trinary system, and how is that orbiting processing working? Your your thoughts on that, and then uh, thank you, Michael. Oh sure. 
Oh yeah, in fact, the uh, the physicist that uh, that Scott and Chris work with um, out there, she she first came to WSO, and and we we we've, we've been right there sharing all the papers with her and stuff until just recently. But um, yeah, I'm convinced that what she has written, um, you know, in terms of it being possibly a trinary star system, is pretty legitimate. And we're not talking about all kinds of like one kind of star. We you know, there's the potential where a lot of people think there might be actually a black star in the area. Which is right. uh, one you can't even see. Oh yes, you know? the dreaded dark star is what my guests have called it. Yeah, but I mean mm -hmm. the, the the planets that we're seeing, though, at least that I think that we're seeing, in my opinion, in my you know my humble opinion, you know, is enough indication to show that we're dry, we're we're riding parallel with our sisters, and we're hopefully it isn't going to last too long. All right, Steve, thank you so much, brother. Michael, thank you as always, and I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, thank you for the call, Robert. I do appreciate it, my friend. Uh, he's uh, he, he's a valent uh, watcher for this Planet X. He, uh, he does a lot of research himself. Me, I have people on. I mean, I've researched it myself in my early days when I first started my show. I mean, I went like hell. And, you know, I had talked to so many different people, including John Moore, um, uh, Dr. Rand. I've talked to, uh, uh, you know, Marshall Masters and all these other people. And, you know, for me, the reason I took an interest in it was because back in 1983, I was in high school and in my science class, I was given a small paperback magazine and we were to pick out a project out of that magazine, something we wanted to write about. And my story was Planet X. That's what they called it. It was, they said that the uh, satellite had gone out of orbit and caught a glimpse of this. It was partially in our solar system at that time, they said, uh, but that it was going to go back out and then in another orbit, eventually we would see it again. And so, you know, and I, and I don't remember everything about the story, but I remember running home and thinking, yay, yay they found this planet and there could be life on it. Who knows? Um, and then years later, I find out that it's not such a happy thing that um, it could actually cause a lot of problems. And so I do remember it. So and that's why I take such an interest in it, because, you know, this is something I've heard about since I was in high school, uh, seventh grade. Yeah. So most people haven't had that experience. Right. So like for me, I, I this is all information I've learned over the last two and a half years, you know. And so I feel still like kind of a puppy in terms of what I'm learning about the, you know, the whole truth or movement and all that kind of stuff. So I wish that, yeah. I, I wish I could get my hands on that paperback that the teacher had handed out that day. Oh, I wish I have it. I wish I had it, but I don't. Well, I was going to, you know, bring up the resistance that the, that the subject of Planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis, whatever you want to call it. That's the other thing that really just nails it for me. It's like, if this wasn't any big deal, if it was just like, it was just, you know, hearsay and rumor and all that, why, <clears throat> why do, do Planet X researchers get bombarded as badly as we do? It's like UFO researchers don't even get a tenth of the resistance we get. Well, yeah, and, you know, I had some amateur astronomers who used to, you know, I'd throw questions their way, but it got to the point where, I mean, they got so passionate, I mean, they wanted to take down every Planet X guest that came along, and I'm like, well, I got to at least be willing to listen and hear these people out because maybe one of these days somebody's going to have something that you can't refute, and that's what I look for. I look for irrefutable evidence, and I've seen some pretty good stuff, some pretty convincing stuff, but nothing that's made me run to the hills tomorrow, at least. Not me either, right? So I want to be clear that you know, right now I'm this. I have that. I like. I have this attitude that you got to live in the now. You want to enjoy what you have as much as you can. Enjoy the people that you have around you as much as you can, and you should do that anyway. Oh, that's right. I mean, if you're constantly in fear of dying, then you're not living, and so you're right. wasting your. You know, who knows? This could be your only trip here. So. Damn it, but enjoy it's, again, it. it's like, you know, why? Why why did the why is this subject so vilified? Why is this the one that just seems to just piss people off? I don't get it. I, I know, I think I know why. And I think the reason why is because there's been so many charlatans who have come along uh in the past. And you know that that old crying wolf thing. Uh I mean, how many times has someone come out and say, 2012, everyone's dead, or 2010, or or they make these dates, and because it doesn't happen, 
it really throws an arrow in it all, and I think it's done on purpose. If there's any legitimacy, yeah, but see, that does, that's like that's like you know. So, so let's think about that for a second. So because we had a bunch of charlatans, we had a bunch of people that didn't know what the hell they were talking about, or they were just excited because they saw some dots in the sky or whatever, right? Is that any reason to invalidate research and discussion on the topic that's trying to take a serious look at it? Well, I'm not going to say it's a reason, no, but some people are petty like that. And I mean, they get, you know, after they get fooled a couple times, they say, oh, I'm not even going to listen to that now. You know, yeah, but that's a PSYOP uh, formula in itself, man. That's like CIA 101. That's why I accept I want to talk to everybody. Hey, you know, some people tell me, oh, Mike, I can't believe you've had this guest or that guest on. And it's like, well, I can't believe you're not open enough to at least listen to people. Oh, you want to know the guest that I get that that I got that with was Dr. Richard Allen Miller, who I think is just freaking awesome. Oh, I've had him. him on a few times. I love him too. Yeah, I've I've got some ridicule. See, I don't care though. I mean, my whole thing is, well, you you took time to listen to the show, didn't you? So yeah, you sure did. And Dr. Richard Allen Miller, I mean, you know, you you get this like this that uh, he's this occult, he's this witch, and all that kind of stuff. Like, dude. You need to talk to Dr. Richard Allen Miller for like an hour like I have, a steady. You can't keep him on one subject for more than 20 seconds. Oh, man, he's all over the place, and everything he goes to is of interest. I mean, so... It is all super interesting, <laughs> but he writes books, and you guys... I don't mean to just, like, plug him, but I just think he's great. But it's an example of somebody that's misjudged. <clears throat> this is a guy that actually had to approach the occult from a scientific perspective, under government orders in the 60s and 70s. So they were actually trying to break it down as a scientific issue, right? Yeah. For that work, now he's going to be called a witch by Christian. Give me a break, man. He's a beautiful man. So Yeah, uh, he, he is a good guy. Now, uh, hang on with us one more time, Steve. We're going to take a quick break this time. Uh, I have got uh, questions here in the chat, so I'm just going to roll them out to you here really quick. Uh, huh? let, all right. So one just comes from Daryl. He says he has two questions. Is Planet X a planet or object that phases in and out from other dimensions or other reality planes? And do you believe CERN is responsible for it being partly seen? Interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. So the first question, is Planet X an interdimensional planet? Well, how would I know? I, again, the, the first thing is that's such a fantastic thing to say, right? But it is possible, guys. And here's why I say that. In science right now, for us to make our quantum theories work and all that kind of stuff, for them to make their math work right now, they have to have at least 11 dimensions. Do you hear me? Not three, not four, not five, 11. That's what science works with right now. That's what they do with their calculations is 11 dimensions. So could something be sleeping in and out of a dimensional field or th we, see, we see things from time to time that have slipped in and out of that stuff? Of course that's possible, okay? But is it likely? I think what's more likely because of the uh, helium that we're seeing in our neighborhood, which is this, the, the telltale sign of a brown dwarf, I think the magneto pause, I think the earth events and all that stuff, I think we're dealing with something in our dimension right now, though. I think we're dealing with objects that are in our particular part of the cosmos that we can observe now um all right that, so what was the second part of the question uh that? do you believe cern is responsible for it being partly seen possible i mean again it, you know but not likely because cern you know the kind of thing that i get worried about with cern is that they're opening it up interdimensional you know portals and that kind of stuff i think there's part of that is in there and the experimentation that they're doing is that high science that we would have called witchcraft and then you see these pictures of what look like CERN devices throughout history, like in the Hindus, and you know what I mean. My yeah, looks like oh weird yeah. stuff like that. I don't want to. I don't want to overstate what CERN is doing, and I don't want to understate it. I just don't know enough about CERN, particularly, except for they definitely are breaking into other dimensions. There, that is a definite, sure thing. All right, no telling what they can let through. You can you could literally see a Ghostbusters scene come about. I mean, really? Uh, they, Who so knows, right? I mean. A lot of people think that they're going to open up a portal and stuff's going to start pouring through it. Now, I don't know, right? I, here's one theory, though, that I think is a little bit more probably realistic about CERN that I think is that the magnetic field that that thing creates, <clears throat> and we don't have we have more than just one of them. We have several of them. That's just the biggest one in Switzerland. And they could be using that as an electromagnetic discharge unit as well guys they could be using it to help us manage us through the system magnetically too 
So there's all kinds of things, positive and negative, it could be. That's true. I, and, and Steve, if you could think about, if you could make, <laughs> if it could be a thought in your head, it's probably possible. That's exactly right. That's the thing about human beings that I think is so Im Im amazing is if you really think about it, each human being represents a reality because nobody else knows the reality that's in my head. Nobody knows the reality that's in your head, Mike, right. or anybody else for that matter, right? Thank God. And we have imagination <laughs> that if we think of something, we can do it. That's right. That's right. It, you know, and we're we're lucky to be able to do that. Um, Kem asks, with the ra will the raids cause humans to lose memory and their minds by causing neural disconnects disconnects neural disconnects right. what raids i don't know what they well okay so like so you have a electromagnetic activity right so you have a brown dwarf they're supposed to be super electromagnetic you know like 10 times more than our sun or something like that right or whatever it is first of all it's not going to hit us it's, I, I believe it's going to miss us by about 20 au or 10 au or some huge distance but close enough to cause these effects on the earth do i think that it can create that can affect your brain well, think of the MRI machine. How many times have people gone through the MRI machine, which is all magnetic resonance? That is all it is. That is high-powered magnets spinning around at high speeds to create a magnetic resonance to, so that they can see into your tissues. So based on current magnetic resonance technology, I'd say that electromagnetic uh, waves are not going to be our big problem here. I think it's probably going to be more like big rocks. That's my big problem. <laughs> All right, and uh, here's a, here's another one here, and I'm just gonna I'm just trying to get through a few more of these questions. Caller, hang on, we will get to you. Um, let's see, uh, when will Nibiru be visible to the mass public? We already covered that. Uh, Decline asks, is Yellowstone still on the table for worldwide ending events? Yeah, because 650,000 years ago, they know for a fact it caused A E L E. Period. All right. So, yeah, 650,000 years ago, and there's a caldera or a cal the, the, whatever that cauldron of magma underneath there. That's getting that's actually bigger than what they thought it was. So, could Yellowstone cause a a, a a very huge cataclysmic event? Of course, it can. It's done it before. All right. And Five Star asks: Has the guests noticed a huge increase in sinkholes starting last year, especially in California? And I have news for this guy: It started well before last year. Uh, I think the big one wasn't Louisiana. I mean, that hit the news. Really got. Well, what about the ones in the Russian steppes, Michael? I mean, those things yeah. are humongous. Oh yeah, and then Florida. I mean, one guy was going to bed one night. He got swallowed. By the earth, you know, his whole house went down. Right? Yeah, that's just horrible. What luck, <laughs> right? Not funny. No, it's not. But it, I, man, can you imagine how long do you spend in that hole? That you know, they couldn't even. Re Anyways, so you've noticed the increase in sinkholes, though. Without obviously. a doubt, yeah. And I don't have any statistics. It's anecdotal, but it, it, but I would. I think it's something that I want to look into and just get see if I can get some stats on it. All right, and uh, all these rich people going underground, that's all the money going to get them when they come out, uh, bugger all. Okay, I think that was just a comment. All right, so next up, uh, let's go ahead and get this call. Memphis, Tennessee, 901 area code. You're on Late Night in the Midlands. Who we got here? Hey, MBS, CR, fresh hey. out of the hospital after five days. Hey, CR, well, I'm glad you got it. It's good when you get out. And, and you get out and you're I not dodged, in a bag. <laughs> I dodged another stint. Uh, they prepped me for a stint Friday afternoon, went through my right wrist, and that's something new. Instead of going through your growing, they went through my wrist. Oh, they can. They, the blockage was that bad. Yeah, they could go through either one. They told me that, too. They, they prefer going through the groin area in most cases, but they can go through other areas. It's, man, you gotta you got to take care of yourself. What are you doing that you keep getting yeah, clogged man. up? Well, starch and sugar, diabetes, get, and I let it get out of control again. Man, get anyway, away. while I'm in while I'm in there, Sunday afternoon I get up and I'm kinda of walking around, walk down to the nurse's station, get a cup of coffee, come back, and my room's on the very end and I'm I've got a clear view of the west and they've got this uh, enclosure thing around that just got glass on the outside, just outside the building, so you can stand there. You can actually see the outsides of the building and the streets and the tree line because I'm on the fourth floor. I'm above the tree line. I'm looking out at the sun, you know, glowing, and I notice as 
within an hour's time, I counted at least like 15 chemtrails up in the sky. So I keep watching, and the sun starts coming down, and there's a long line, like somebody took a line and just drew across the sky of gray clouds. And as the sun starts coming down, it gets behind those clouds. I can actually look in the sun's direction without hurting my eyes. And I notice the, the sun is like pulsing. And the way I can attribute to that is you've, been, you've seen the, the small town that's got the one flashing light at night, flashes yellow in all four directions. It's oh. just like that behind those clouds. And you notice the sun gets stronger, and then it get a little dimmer. And then it get a little stronger, a little dimmer. So I keep watching it for a while, and then it starts coming down where I can't watch it without hurting my eyes. And I'm still seeing the chemtrails, and I'm seeing them paint the sky. And as that sun gets right down about just level with the treetops, and then now this is going to be below where I'm standing, I notice I look up, and the chemtrails are gone. And the clouds start dissipating, and the sky starts turning light blue. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the hell are they trying to hide? <laughs> because I'm standing here watching this, and I'm seeing all these clouds pop up as they're painting the sky with these chemtrails, and it's, you know, getting cloudy. And then 30 minutes later, it's like they were never even there, and it's like it just cleared completely up. So that was strange. Yeah, well, and sometimes you won't see the planes because they'll chemtrail in the town, you know, uh, away from you. And then uh, the weather pattern will bring it in. And so, you know... Well, What's he, what he's referring to, though, and what he saw, and I've also seen this and studied it deeply. I've actually done um, uh, thermal photography and all kinds of things to confirm this. We did research. We have photography from the space station. We have photography from the ground. We have scientific white papers. We have patents. There, in our opinion, at WSO and WSOLive.com, our opinion is that they are using an artificial lighting device in the sky right now to balance the what is really an inconsistent sunlight that's happening right now because the sun is being drained by its sisters and and it, it could go to a magenta color which we've seen on the iss and they have to cover that up by shining a very very bright light from from near space and that's why that picture that i had with the sun with the cloud on it i don't know if you still have that one michael that one is intriguing because it kind of underscores or what this person just talks about in terms of seeing being able to see that sun directly yeah, that is the device. It's called a Fresnel lens. It's spinning. We it, we know. And I know it's as wild as thing that you've ever heard. And you probably think I'm as loony as a boon. But I'm telling you, man, we have researched this thing thoroughly. And I think that's what you were seeing. You were seeing the artificial lighting system. Hmm. And it was only when the sun went behind that line of clouds for that about 10-minute span, you could you could look at that direction, but you know, without hurting your eyes and burning your eyeballs out. And you could see it look like it was flashing, like a, like I said, like a light. Like it was spinning, on right? It was spinning and in the middle, right? On and, and dim. Very. Yeah. 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 And that's why we're getting that black dot on all these photographs everywhere, because that is actually the pointing device of that lighting system. That's what we figured out. Uh, these are all the theories that we've come up at with WSL, okay? And I'm saying that we've paid, spent a lot of time researching it, but research it yourself. Don't take my word for it. If there's an imminent threat coming in, in, in or let's say that it's not going to happen and you have something to tell me that it's not going to happen, that this stuff is just me, just crazy or whatever, bring the information on because I would love to be able to get up in a couple of weeks and say we were wrong. I would love to be able to say that. Mike. And that's me. what I appreciate about you, Steve, because there's others out there like Marshall Masters who will not admit when something isn't right. And it's a shame because I've opened the door for that guy plenty of times. And, you know, I've had others tell me that he gets he gets very offensive when you when you want to talk about his work other than agreeing with him. So, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, but, again, you know, it's not about agreeing or not agreeing. It's like if this is a threat, if this is something that we need to be aware of, then let's share it. But, listen, if it's not real, if it's a deception, if the government is doing this, so all the theories that we talked about tonight, which I they're all on the table for me, Michael. I haven't decided yet if there isn't some kind of shenanigans going on here, if you know what I mean. Well, right. And and that's where I'm at. That's why I do this. This is why I, I do shows about Planet X, because the possibilities exist. The interest of the people is there. I mean, if I stopped doing shows on this, it wouldn't be long before people would say, oh, he's trying to cover it up. You know, so, hey, here it is. If you got information, you want to get it to Steve. And now, Steve, if they want to get information to you, how do they go about doing that? 
Right. So my email, which I'll email, which I'll send to here to you, put it up later, is uh, Olson dot Stephen dot D as in dog at Gmail. So it's S T E V E. I'm sorry, Steve. I forgot my own email all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, uh, it happens. So Olson dot Stephen dot D Olson O L S O N dot Stephen dot D at Gmail dot com or come to WSO Live dot com. There's a way to get to me there through our website. But the, if you're going to go anywhere to research Planet X that, that we've provided, just go to our WSO um, YouTube channel. There are 507 videos up now, Mike. Wow. Michael. All right. And uh, uh, CR, anything else you want to get out uh, before I, I have to let you go? We're getting near the end, and we got another show coming up live on L&M. Yeah, I just I wanted to say the nurse that was taking care of me this afternoon uh, I had the program on. She heard some of it. She's like, who is that? And what, what, she, what where, where did I find that? And so I turned her on that late night in the Midlands. And uh, she said, I'm going to go and check it out, maybe check out the chat room. She started telling me things. And she says, you know, I think I'm crazy sometimes. And I see stuff like this. And she started telling me all the things we discussed. I said, you'll fit in perfect at l n because that's exactly what we talk about. Yeah. So I, think I got you a new listener at least. And it's, it's nice to know that People are, are, are becoming awake no matter, you know, in just every day you run across them now. But they're scared to speak out because she said, I'm afraid all these other nurses will think I'm nuts. That's that's great, so, CR. But I'd rather if you if you didn't hang around the hospital to get to get us yeah. listeners, you stay out of that place. Oh, trust me. I didn't <laughs> want to be in there either. When I got home, my little chihuahua jumped up my arms and she ain't left me the whole time. She's wanting to stay right up under me the whole time I've been here on. Right. In the last three hours. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, I'll talk to you all later. Thanks all right. Time. Thank you for the call. And you stay safe, man. Uh, try to eat healthy, I don't know, at least some of the week. Uh, but, Michael, I had a comment on that, that that story he talked about the nurse. That has been the biggest thing that surprised me about WSO was how many people were like, I thought I was crazy seeing this stuff. And deluge of a uh, majority of people that subscribe to WSR are people that are just, they just like, they finally found somebody that told them that they weren't crazy. Well, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, it's, that's why I do this show. It's, you know, everything's on the table and you know, the way I see it again, I'll say it again. If, if you could think of it, then it's possible. And so, you know, I want to know about all this stuff, everything, not only planet X, but, ghostly planes uh you name it i mean i want to know as much as i can because i really think this trip that we're making through this particular reality right now is all it's a classroom and we're supposed to uh learn a lesson here so let's all learn together and hey when class ends you know maybe we'll all graduate at the same time something like this happens no and i want to appreciate late late in the midlands too i mean you've been a great uh, a great part of our community. I mean, and, you know, I listen to you, you know, religiously. I love your show. I love your guests. And I'm I'm just honored to be on the show with you, man, honestly, to be honest. With well, you. thank I, you. And now that we've broken the ice and finally got you on, maybe we could do more of this uh, in the future. I, I would I'd I, love to. I love your show. I, I would be a guest anytime. All right. Well, great, Steve. I thank you. And I've really enjoyed having you on tonight. And uh, definitely we'll do this again in the future. I mean, because this subject's not going away anytime soon. No, I think we're going to see more and more. And uh, the last thing I was going to sneak in before we leave is animal deaths. Just want to throw that in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The animal deaths. There's another one. Uh, Sorry, I, I had to get that one last thing <laughs> because it's just it's everything's happening at one time. And and so we need to stick together. That's the main thing. We got to stop seeing each other as the enemy, Michael. That's the thing that I'm getting I'm getting coming to realize is none of us are really the enemy of each other. If you really think about it at the end of the day. Do I really want what you have? I mean, sure, there are bad people in the world. Don't that's not what I'm talking about. But I think that good people can also rise up and 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 I really do believe that the good people can win. And that's what I'm gonna stick to. I don't care what anybody says. I agree, brother. Well, listen, one more uh, th one more shot here. Anything uh, else that you want to get out? Um websites, whatever. I do have your YouTube channel, one of them, linked up on the website. When I get this archived, I'll put, uh, you want to send me some links, I'll get all those links in for you. Right on. So the main one is WSOLive.com. We're trying to build a confidential area for because people are getting sick of being harassed. So we built a little, um, let's call it gated community. But 
WSO YouTube channel. If you put in WSO, at least for now, until they take me off the search engines, it comes right up to the top. I mean, you know, and you'll be able to find WSO videos. Just check us out, man. I mean, you know, if it, it's not going to hurt you to know what's going on. We cover a lot more than just Planet X. We look at a lot of science. And, uh, and, and my biggest thing I want to tell people is just don't be afraid. Really, don't be afraid. Absolutely. All right, Steve. Well, thank you. I'm glad we had this opportunity. It's a, a great way to start off the week here. So I thank you for joining us, and we will do this again. My pleasure, sir. All right. Have a great night. All right, folks. There he goes, Steve Olson. Thank you for listening to the first hour of Late Night in the Midlands. To finish listening to this episode, go to lnmradionetwork.com and become a subscriber. Becoming a subscriber is easy. There is a link on every page to take you to the subscription page. The cost is low, and you would be supporting Late Night in the Midlands and all of our efforts to bring you the truth. Again, go to lnmradionetwork.com, click on the subscribe button, and you can finish listening to this episode as well as all of the other shows that are in our archives.